Hi, my name is Rita, a mechanical engineer from Saratech, and welcome to our Tips and Tricks tutorial series. Thank you for watching this video on applying remembered assembly constraints. If you have any questions about anything covered in this tutorial, please be sure to ask your questions in the comments below. So today I'm going to be demonstrating how to apply remembered assembly constraints to an NX model. This is beneficial to include in NX parts that are regularly used in assembly, such as standard parts that are commonly used over and over again. It allows the user to add the part into the assembly without having to select the constraints that need to be applied every single time. So I have here a flathead screw standard part. This type of part is oftentimes used in numerous fastener assemblies. Um, it makes it the ideal type of NX part to apply remembered assembly constraints to. So the first step in the process of applying remembered assembly constraints to an NX model is to apply the constraints as you normally would. So I have here an assembly block. I'm going to go ahead and click add under the assemblies tab and click the part that I want to add in. So for this part, I want to add an align constraint to align it the um, center line of the um, socket head and the center line of the hole. And I also want a touch constraint from the bottom of the head of the screw to the top surface of the assembly. So if I click OK here, and you can see under the assembly navigator, we have our constraints. That there are two constraints that we applied and our part. So now if we navigate to assemblies, under component position, we have the remembered constraints function. I'm going to go ahead and click that. So you can select the component and the two constraints and hit OK. If we navigate back to our NX part underneath properties, we can see the two constraints that were um, included. Okay. Go ahead and save that. Now, if we were to go ahead and reapply this constraint, this um, NX part to the assembly block, we'll see the results of this function. Let's go ahead and add it in again. And we see the constraints that um, were remembered here. And all we have to do now is just to select the um, the parts of the assembly and it automatically constrains. So there we have it. Uh, thank you for watching this video on applying remembered assembly constraints. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more helpful tutorials. Thank you. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.